alcoholic. And I want to thank you for bringing me out for to be a 20-minute speaker. Was it 20? <laughs> Two-minute speaker. Uh, you know, my Friday date's November, November 2nd, 1999. I like to say that first because that's the most important date of my life. You know, I never thought that date would be important. But, uh, you know, for those of you who are new getting chips and standing up for the first 30 days, you know, it's uh, get your sobriety date, man. That's, that's you know, that's a date that, uh, you know, it's, it's so important to me, you know, because that's the date that I started changing and going to a whole new life. Uh, you know, I, I qualify for this program in a couple of ways. You know, I've got eight DUIs, uh, one on a moped, and the last one on a moped, and one on a bicycle. <laughs> You know, I've been uh, raided, possession, under the influence, all that kind of crazy stuff. You know, and, you, and those are all good things, you know, to have for qualifications if you're going to come here and be an alcoholic. But it's, those don't mean anything if it's not what it, what's inside, because I have something inside me that makes me an alcoholic, you know. And it's that mental twist that I have and that little allergy of the body thing that, you know, I used to uh, you'd sit there on Friday nights, and I remember this, I'd, I'd get paid on Friday. And uh, I'd put my money aside, okay, I'm going to pay this for the rent, I'm going to pay this. You know, I'm going to do this with the bills, and I'm going to buy food with this. And this is what I'm going to party with. You know, and, uh, you know, come Sunday morning, you know, Sunday morning, Monday, Monday morning, you know, I'm sitting there, and I'm broke, and it's 5 o'clock in the morning. You know, I ain't got no more, no more dope, no more booze, no more alcohol, you know, and I'm just, I'm just sitting there, and I got this sick feeling in my stomach, you know, and I'm like, why did I, why am I here again? You know, why do I keep doing this? And, and, you know, the crazy thing is I kept doing that time after time, you know, and I, and I couldn't stop, and, you know, I didn't know that there was, I didn't know that other people suffered that way. I just thought, man, something's wrong here. But, you know, and I knew if I ever started it, I was going to do it. But as soon as the knock came on the door, you know, I'm, I'm back doing it again, you know, because, I, you know, I, I, this time it'll be a little different. You know, this time I'm not going to spend all my money, you know. And I, how many times did I say that, you know, and uh, it just happened one night. I was sitting there at, uh, you know, decided to work on my car at 2 o'clock in the morning. And uh, <laughs> I was at a hotel, living at a hotel. I had it going on, you know. I, yeah, had a... I thought I did have it going on. I had a big screen TV in there. You know, I was I was lived there for a year. You know, I used to ask people who weren't, uh, you know, people who weren't alcoholic. You know, and I'd say I'd say, you know, why don't you want to live like this? Look, I got the pool, I got the big screen TV, a maid service every day. Why wouldn't you want to live here? And they would just look at me like I was crazy. You know, come find out I was. You know, and um, you know that started going out there working on that car at two o'clock in the morning. You know, I got busted by Ontario PD one more time, and. Um, you know, they put me in jail, and I tried everything I know. I'm a, I'm a salesman for a furniture company, you know, and I, and I was working at the Ontario store at the time, and I knew the guy, and I was like, look, you know what, you give me a deal, you know, and I'll, let me go, and I'll make sure you get some good furniture deal, you know, and they weren't having it, you know. They just had to, he just looked at me and said, you need to go, you know, and they took me in, and, uh, you know, it started the procession, and it just so happened, you know, and I don't believe in coincidences or anything like that, but it just so happens that the, my probation, because I was on probation in L.A. County, and so I figured my big thing was when I get in trouble in different counties, I move. You know, if I'm in Orange County, I got in trouble, got all those DUIs in Orange County, I'm moving to San Bernardino County. You know, and I got out there and got in trouble, so I was going to L.A. County. Then I got in trouble there, so I moved back to San Bernardino County because I found out with those probation reports, if you're outside of the county, all you got to do is mail it in. You know, they asked me, they used to ask me when I had those ones for Orange County, have you drank anything today? No. <laughs> you know, have you drank anything this month? I'm like, no. You know, beer cans all over the place, you know, and it's just, no, I haven't done that, no. And, uh, but, you know, it, it started, I mean, this probation officer that I was on, that I was on probation with knew Carl, and he knew the Twenty House. And uh, he told me, he says, you know, because I just got through lying to him, because I lied to him, I had to see him in, in, in about a week. So I went and seen him, and uh, he asked, have you been arrested? You know, that form you got to fill out, have you had anything to do with law enforcement officers? And I was like, no, because this last time they didn't let me do the mail-in thing. Uh, they asked me if I had anything to do with it, any law enforcement officers, and I was like, no, and I was lying. I was like, should I tell him, should I not tell him? No, I don't want to go to jail right now. You know, and uh, he calls me the next day. He says, you lied to me. And I was like, well, I w that wasn't really called a lie, you know. And it's, you know, because I was going to tell you, you know, and I tried to do that, all that all that conniving and everything that we think we're smarter than everybody else. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he, had, he knew of the pointy house. And... Uh, he told me, check yourself into the pointy house, and I'll recommend you go, you know, I'll recommend you go there. And I got sentenced to the pointy house for a year, and I, then I had to go and take care of that other charge. And luckily, both of them went concurrent, and uh, I served some time in that pointy house. Well, you know, as we're out there doing our running and gunning, uh, we, we don't really have too many good friends, you know, and I was down to one good friend. And uh, I was in this program. And, I, and again, I came here, I didn't come here to 
gets over. I, I really didn't have any intentions on doing that. I remember when I came into his office and he told me about this program, and I was like, well, I said, I'm here because of, of drugs, so I'm, you know, I will drink, but I'll just do it on the outside of the house, and I won't have anything, you know, and he just looked at me and said, like, I just don't know how we do it, you know, and I was like, because I was trying, I still, could, I couldn't imagine that you were going to tell me I couldn't drink again, because for all my life, you know, it was, the drinking was the thing that just, it did it for me, you know, the phone booth did for me, and what the, I mean, the drinking did for me, what the phone booth did for Clark Kent, you know, it just made me the person I always wanted to be, you know, and, uh, you know, it's, I, you know, I couldn't imagine you were going to tell me I couldn't do that no more. Because you, you, what, what's, what made me really think that was because you don't know how I feel when I don't drink. You know, because I'm irritable, I'm discontented. You know, they talk about it in the book, in the big book, about that Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, after they've been drinking for a while. I was the Mr. Hyde before I started drinking. You know, I needed that to get me to calm, to get me going, you know. And I, and I was doing it all day long, you know. And I just couldn't imagine they were going to tell me I couldn't do that no more. You know, and, uh, but they didn't. But the friend I was telling you about, he, uh, me and him drank a lot there towards the end, and uh, he died 30 days into this thing from esophageal hemorrhage, you know, from drinking too much. And uh, I saw, you know, and, and the whole time I was drinking, all my family lived in Kentucky, you know, and I didn't think I was really hurting them too much, you know, because they don't know about me, you know, I'm, I'm out here and I'm not really hurting them, but, you know, that's selfish thinking on my part, because I watched what he put his family through. Because when he, when he died, I watched all the suffering and the pain that he put his kids through, you know, and, and his wife. and. I just said to myself, you know what, I don't, I don't want to go out like this. I, you know, there's got to be some better way. You know, and uh, I remember I put my 30-day chip in his coffin. And I turned around to his wife and I said, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do better. You know, and, you know, I still work for that company now. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a regional manager for that company now. You know, and, uh, you know, I, I get to carry this message to other people who are in the, you know, because I, I like to bring people into the, to the company who work, you know, who are, who are trying to get sober, you know. And I try to help them out. I try to do a lot of things because I got help when I first got there, you know, and they gave me a second chance. And, uh, you know, he told me, you know, I told, I told his wife, I said, you know, I, I'll do what I need to do, you know. And I started, I got a sponsor, started doing the steps of outline, you know, started doing the steps that they talk about, you know. And, you know, the, my sponsor told me I need to read the first 164 pages, and, you know, it took me five months to do it. But, you know, I, I did it, you know, and, I, and but the whole time I was doing it, I started, they told me this thing about getting commitments in meetings and, and going to meetings. Well, my first year of sobriety, I went to about 17 meetings a week, and I had about seven or eight commitments. You know, and I just, and then I, then my life started getting better. You know that feeling that you have when you first come in, it's like that, oh, God, I'm just not going to, you know, I just don't feel right. I don't feel right. You know, it's, something's wrong here. You know, that feeling started slipping away because I started getting getting friends in this place. You know, and I started hanging out with you guys. You know, it's like, wait a minute. You guys felt like I felt when I wasn't drinking. Cause that, and that was a crazy thing because I thought I felt that was a lone feeling of mine, that nobody else felt that way. You know, I started hearing people talk, sharing at the sharing at the podium and talking about how, you know, they they how they felt when they weren't drinking. And it was like, wait a minute, that's like me. You know, I felt like that. That guy knows something, you know. And I was like, this is cool. You know, I started listening and, and you know, the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, she was up here, she was talking about that big book. For those of you who are new who don't have it, I really recommend you get that thing. You know, because that thing, that thing's me to a T. You know, I listen to that thing, and I get, luckily I was enough to, to, to have that big book broke down to me, word by word, you know, and, and, and explain to me in, in language that I can understand how it, how, it is, how it affects me and how I interact with that book, you know. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, this is, you know, I've got uh, a little over four years sober, you know, and uh, you know, my life is, is, is just, you know what, you know, it's just, I, I just never, I wouldn't have ever thought four or five, four or five years ago that this would be possible, you know, that, that, that I get to feel like this inside. You know, because forget the outside things, you know, I, I wanted to die inside. You know, I, I did, you know, I just, I just didn't want to, didn't want to go on, I didn't want to do anything, you know, and I, and I was content to drink for the rest of my life because I thought that was what I needed to do to be happy, you know, and, uh, you know, I've come in here and I found a new way of life, you know, I, I worked the steps that they told me to work, you know, I did all those things. I love doing those amends, you know, I'm, I'm uh, four years, you know, four years, a little over four years sober. And I like to say it's $23,000 worth of amends I've had to do, you know, and I, and I did it because I have, I, I, there's another guy, there's, I get, to, I'm lucky enough where there's three great people in my life that I get to listen to. And Carl's one of them, there's a couple other, Earl H and, uh, and, Rick, and Earl H used to say, how free do you want to be? How free do you want to be in this thing? You know, and I want to be free. You know, it talks about in the big book, rocketed to a fourth dimension. You know, and I wanted to find out what that was, you know, and doing those amends, man, that's when, this, that's when the stuff starts happening for you. A lot of people balk at that, at that four step and they say, oh, no, I can't do this, you know. It ain't nothing like shelling out the money to those guys for the, for the night, you know, because also you're like, man, you know, what am I doing here? But you know what, I did it because they told me that my life would get better if I did, you know. 
and my life has gotten better. You know, the, the last the last page of the doctor's pain, I love that, you know, because I guess I, I mentioned it the other day, and they said, well, that's because you're a salesman, that's why you like it. last page of the doctor's pain says, however, he did become sold on the ideals contained in this book. You know, I believe that book. I believe that book, you know, and for those of you who haven't read it, read it. Get your own idea of what that book says, because the, the, the recovery is right, outlined right in there. You know, you do all the things you're supposed to do, and, and your life will get better. It just happens that way, you know. Um, you know, those here, you know, I, you know, I, I, you know, standing up, getting a 30 day shift, that's a big deal. It is, you know, but stick close. You know, you got to stick close to this thing. You got to do everything you can. Anytime they, you know, we just talking about it on the way over here, you know, turning your will and your life over to the care of AA. You know, watch what the people in AA do. Watch the people, you know, I used to do that. I'd watch people with the time and I, you know, I just got right behind them. You know, I got my sponsor in front of me. I'm here and I got some sponsees behind me now. And I just keep going down this road, you know, and it's, it's a great role. You know, I, I, I can't say enough about Alcoholics Anonymous, how much it's done for me, the respect I've got back here. I get to look at my dad now. Me and him get to have a, a, a friend relationship. You know, he's still my father, but he's not the father that I stole the money from. You know, that I told him I'd pay him back, and I never did because I paid him back the money that I owed him. You know, and we get to have a good relationship now. You know, and it's all from Alcoholics Anonymous. It's all from doing, this, doing the work that's outlined in the big book. You know, it's from, it's from going, coming to meetings, and it's from sharing the message. Thanks for letting me share.